Rob Cap on the Spirit of Rock Show. 97.7. Good afternoon. My name is Rob Kemp, and I'm uh, across from uh, yet another mom here at the uh, Montreal Children's Hospital. Uh, Wendy Longleg, good afternoon. Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for coming in this afternoon. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, with uh, baby baby Caitlin in tow, although I, I don't see her. Where's where, where, What happened to baby Caitlin? <laughs> she got, uh, the Child Life Services stole her over there. <laughs> she nice. needed a drink of water. <laughs> actually, yeah, we're, we're watching uh, some doctors actually a doctor on on uh, 15 month old uh, Caitlin right here <laughs> in the cafeteria of the Montreal Children. That's how dedicated the staff are here. Uh, Wendy, when you were pregnant with Caitlin, uh, they found out that the uh, uh, that she had a a, a bilateral cleft uh, lip and palate. That's right. Can you explain that to? Um, it's a it's a fairly common birth defect, and uh, she was really b- yeah v- uh, the second most common I think. Wow! And uh, it was basically like she had an opening from her nose to her lip on two sides. Right. So instead of just on one side, it was on two sides, and uh, her palate was open oh about a centimeter almost inside right. of her mouth. She had absolutely no palate. Uh, now, when you were pregnant and going through all your appointments, did, did you know, were they able to tell this ahead of time? Or? They were able to see it on the 20-week ultrasound. Right. And as a result, we did several other tests during the pregnancy to see if they could find anything else. But at that time, we didn't find anything. It wasn't until she was born that we started to discover some of the other problems. And what were those other problems that they discovered? Um... I guess the underlying one is that she has a microdeletion on one of her chromosomes, and it's extremely rare. So as a result of that, she has um, neurological developmental delays. She has um, a partial case of diabetes insipidus. Basically, she has all kinds of hormone levels that don't stabilize properly. She has a failure to thrive. She just doesn't eat. She has a feeding tube. Um, just the list goes on and on pretty long list for a mom to handle yeah <laughs> sometimes I think that my medical degree should arrive in the mail now <laughs> uh, of course uh, this, we were just talking about uh, Caitlin's doctor a couple of seconds ago uh, I want you to I want to you didn't see this uh, but I was sitting across watching you uh, talk to some other people here from our sister station and I saw what I assume is Caitlin's doctor on the other side of the room uh, giving you hand gestures and hand signals and support. And I thought, how amazing is it that the doctors are taking time out of what I can only assume is an incredibly busy schedule to come down and, and give you the type of support that you need here today? You know, her doctors are amazing. Uh, you know, whether it's today or any other day that we're here, they just have gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to her. They make themselves available and they usher us through the ER and they get the test done and they email me. They are amazing, amazing. And they're such an important part of our life. And so are the other services here. And uh, the woman that you see with her now is, is the head of child life services. And they make our lives so much better, so much better. I can't even begin to say the, the quality of life that has come out of their services. There's her music therapist, (laughs) (laughs) and uh, and she's amazing. She's one of the family, and I I have to say, I think she's Caitlin's favorite person. (laughs) Tell me about the music therapy that uh, Caitlin goes through, and how is that helping her? Um, You know, we discovered the music therapist when we were in the NICU, and uh, in that NICU, they have all these monitors, you know, the saturation monitor that you want to buy, and all these crazy monitors that go off constantly. And you're there and it's so tension filled. I mean, it's such a scary place to be with all these monitors constantly going off. Plus your baby's attached to a bunch and of tubes and wires. Exactly, on top of that, you know, yeah. on top of it. And there are these little incubators and it's so scary. And uh, this woman came in to sing with the most beautiful, sweet voice. And it was like, I guess the calm in a storm. And it was just this one sort of grain of humanity in this otherwise horrible horrible situation and uh, ever since then she's come to see Caitlin every time we come and uh, she's even come over to the house to sing to Caitlin and Caitlin reacts to her like she doesn't react to anything else like you can tell that she's listening that she's paying attention that she's enjoying this music and it's it's the most amazing amazing thing because I have a child who doesn't react to anything except that 
Sounds like the uh, music therapy is doing wonders for mom, too. <laughs> it's kind of nice for me, too. Yeah. She usually makes me cry, but, you know. <laughs> Uh, Wendy, what what kind of uh, future is Caitlin gonna have here at the hospital? Is this are you guys here for you guys here for a long time? We are here for the uh, life of Caitlin for the rest of her life. I mean, we hope that we don't have to come as often as we've come in the last year, but uh, she will always need care. She will always need follow up. She'll never be a normal kid. She's gonna always be special. And uh, that requires a lot of work. And uh, this place, I mean, we just need them. It was, I j used to drive past this building, you know, and it, I never thought about it until I had a child who got sick. And then you realize how important everything here is, to how, how important the people are and, and the things that they do for your kid. And even the things like offering you a book to read your child when they're here in the hospital, all those things are so important and they depend on people's donations. Wendy, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having us. She is absolutely beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> the Caring for Kids Radiothon for the Montreal Children's Hospital. Uh, <laughs> if that doesn't make you pick up the phone. Please join the circle of hugs. We need 113 people to join the circle of hugs now. See what you've done. You're going to make me start crying too. 514-939-5437. Please call the Dormevu phone bank. 60 cents a day, just $18 a month. Good luck, Wendy. Thank you so much. It's the Caring for Kids Radiothon for the Montreal Children's Hospital from the Spirit of Rock Show 97.7.